Hello, everyone, and welcome to this uh, this new session of Interview with the Masters featuring the awesome Tyler Carter. Um, for those of you who are new and have never been to an interview uh, interview with the Masters before, these um, these online interview sessions are held as part of um, CGMA's um, promotion for our instructors and other really awesome artists in our community. Um, and also for those of you that, that don't know what CGMA is or what, what we do, we're an online learning academy where you can learn digital art, illustration, and other awesome, awesome tips and tools to understand the industry better. Um, today we will be having Tyler Carter, who is our instructor for the Art of Color and Light. And uh, he's currently working for Blue Sky Studio Studios, and he's here with us right now. So Tyler... Thank you so much for making it out and being with us. <laughs> hey, Allison, thank hey. you so much for having me. Yeah. And I've got an extra deep voice today because I've got a little bit of a, a congestion cold going on, but oh, no. great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to be here and, uh, you know, it's fun. See yeah, this is, this is super fun. Um, and for those of you out there who want to ask Tyler any questions, again, please feel free to ask your questions in the questions uh, window of the uh, webinar. And we'll just go from there. So, Tyler, I'm going to share my screen, or I'm going to ask for your screen share if that's okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. Awesome. Um, make this Boop. Sweet. Cool. Awesome. Can you guys see everything? Is it all clear? I'm going to check the audience view. Make sure it's all good. I think it's good. Looks good to me. Cool. Awesome. Sweet. So, um, Tyler, it looks like uh it looks like everyone can see everything. It's showing up wonderfully. So, um, would you like to uh tell us where you started with your art and what inspired you to to become um the fantastic visual um, development artist you are right now. <laughs> well, thanks. Um, <laughs> I, so I'll give you kind of a brief uh, summary how I got started and just kind of the path, I guess. And I'll go a little bit back to when I just decided that I wanted to do this. Maybe that can be kind of helpful to anybody listening. And like Allison said, any questions that you guys have, um, anything, I'm totally game. So see if you can surprise me. <laughs> but when I started um, animation, I was um, I went to BYU at Brigham Young University, and what had happened is before I went to BYU, I was just looking around uh, online at different schools that you could attend that you might be able to get into a place like a Disney or a Pixar. And when I was really young, uh, I was really interested in dinosaurs and I'll draw a dinosaur here for that. And I really <laughs> wanted to do something after I saw Jurassic Park. I really wanted to make movies. Yeah, it was like life changing. It was so, so awesome. That's awesome. And I just remember thinking, <laughs> yeah, I remember thinking it would be so cool to get into movies doing that. The only problem was is I really didn't know uh, how I would do that. And um, I saw a special once on uh, TV talking about BYU's animation program and uh, they were you know getting mentors from Disney and from Pixar and had a lot of success and so I was thinking maybe I will try that out so I applied to the school and I got in and since it's a university I applied to the animation program later on once I was into the college or into the university and then uh, I got accepted into the program and it was awesome like that's kinda how it started and I was I just felt like I was meant to be there I I just had like this really I don't know I, I guess I felt like I was just very driven to be there and I was very excited and so in the first year um, my goal was to get an internship and I thought if I could get an internship to a game studio or to uh, one of the movie studios, that'd be awesome. And I got to be honest, like I was, I knew very, very, very little of what I was doing. <laughs> it was just one of those things where I was just trying my best and trying to learn um, as much as I can. 
just as I was going along. And um, <clears throat> what ended up happening was I uh, just worked my butt off the first year and towards the end I just applied to a whole bunch of internships. And uh, one of my friends, she had done an internship at Disney the year before and she said, hey, you should apply to this. You know, you probably don't have a good chance because it's more for upperclassmen. It was just like their summer internship. And I'm telling you, it was my first year, so I, I really didn't have a ton of <clears throat> experience. And I don't, you know, my portfolio wasn't anything amazing, but, you know, one thing you guys should always be looking for is just apply everywhere and apply lots because you never know what's going to happen. And that's exactly happened. what happened with me is I uh, applied and I got a phone call from Disney and they wanted to bring me out to do an internship in the summer, which was crazy because I just, I, I was like blown away and really, really excited and it, it turned out to be an amazing experience and got to meet all these people who worked on these movies when I was growing up that I absolutely loved and make all these new friends and it was really cool. So um, that's kind of how like I got started and after I came back from that internship I decided to uh, make a short film and it's called Dream Giver. You can see it online and it was something that I worked on with 46 other students. I, I came back from the Disney internship and started kind of developing the visual visuals and the, the concepts and then storyboarding things out and when that was kind of closing after about a year after I've been doing it I started bringing other people on uh, to work on it with me and kind of putting together a team and then uh, around that time I applied to Pixar for an internship there and ended up getting that so the next summer I went to Pixar and had an awesome experience there and at this internship I got to work on films so I worked on uh, a little bit on Cars 2 and Toy Story 3 and just a teeny bit on Brave nothing really crazy on those but man it was it was awesome and the whole time I was there I was also directing my film and the people who had stayed back uh, at school so just making sure that everything was going forward all the time on that and it was so cool such a fun experience and then uh, I came back from that uh, finished my film and uh, Dream Giver won uh, the student Emmy that year a uh, student Emmy that year oh, wow. yeah it was doing great and it went to a bunch of film festivals doing really well and then uh, I graduated in 2011 like in that that spring applied to Blue Sky and uh, Blue Sky happened to be looking for people and so when my internship was kind of over there um, they hired me on full time and that's kind of basically how I got here. Awesome. <laughs> <In a nutshell. laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> it was it was crazy and actually just telling it it's like it, I had a lot of things that were really fortunate happened to me and a lot of really good friends along the way um, that really helped me. And I, I should mention like Bill Perkins, he was my mentor when I was at Disney and he has been like a huge um, help to me for a long time. He's been a great mentor. That's really, really awesome. Cool. Um, are you able to talk about what you're working on right now for Blue Sky? Or is that, are you yeah. working on... Uh... Yeah, I can I can tell you about at least some of what I'm doing right now. Um, the last two years, I've been working on uh, peanuts, or maybe more than that, maybe like two and a half, almost three years, mm -hmm. and it has been so fun. Um, <laughs> we had a screening the other day, and I'm really pumped about this movie. It is absolutely crazy when you see like the new clips that we'll be showing soon you are going to not believe just how well uh, we've captured the strips from uh, the Schultz. And the thing that, yeah, the thing that's so cool about this project, and I don't think, I don't think anyone can 
really know until you, uh, I don't know, until you try and do it, mm -hmm. is that it is like way hard to capture what Schultz drew. Mm -hmm. Like you would think that that would be easy, right? You'd think like, hey, uh, Charles Schultz, we call him Sparky at the studio. <laughs> you'd, think that, <laughs> you'd think that that would be like easier to capture or to, to grab, you know, like in the design. Mm -hmm. But man, it has been, it is a huge, huge challenge. And so I'm really looking forward to when everybody can see what we've been doing because it's just been so, such a challenge to design a world that was originally created to be so flat. Uh, so looking forward to that and um, that's what I've been working on mostly. Um, I've been doing design and color. So in Blue Sky things are broken down into design and color so some artists are just doing sketches like starting out with something like that perhaps. Mm -hmm. And then other artists are doing like color keys and and moments, and so I kind of do a little bit of both, just kind of whatever they need me to be doing, and really focus on uh, sets and environments. And the great thing about Blue Sky that I really love is just there's so many awesome artists there that I get to work with, and it's it's just a fun fun place to work. That's great. Really That's awesome. Great people. Yeah. yeah, we have someone in the chat that says they loved your recent series of the Wasatch Mountains. Um, oh, that it was super inspiring. You. They loved the color and the shape. The shapes that you used were were awesome. That's from Nicholas. Thanks, Nicholas. <laughs> that's super nice. <laughs> those yeah. are a lot of fun. That's that's a fun series. I'm trying to make a book with all of those before CTN this year. Oh yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I and I should mention. So everything was going to plan, and then we had a baby just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. When we had the baby, I'm like reconsidering how fast I'm going to be able to do everything. Right. How was that? That's, that must be crazy. Oh, it's so awesome. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Um, her name's Tula. Yeah. Oh. Uh, super, super cute, and just it's awesome. That's it's, fantastic. Yeah, it's really, really fun being a dad. Yeah. Do you find that, um, and I know that you just had the baby, so it's hard to tell right yeah. now, but, like, has it really, has it been harder for you to manage your time now that you have, like, you know, a baby in your life and all that stuff? Like, how, how do you manage that? It's, uh, yeah, it's kind of different. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, yeah, it's like, it's a little bit, um, well, what's the word? It's more difficult to, like, yeah, yeah, I guess planning your time is a little bit harder because yeah. the one thing that I, the variable is I just never know when uh, she's going to want me or need something. Mm -hmm. and so I'm, I'm constantly at her whim and luckily I have like an absolutely amazing wife who totally kicks butt and Aww. helps. Run. So that's Annika and she's so great. Awesome. And so, yeah, it, it is harder but it's totally like it's totally worth it. Yeah, I'm sure it's totally worth it. Yeah, if you're thinking about having kids, it's totally awesome. Like every time I get home and I see Tula at night or in the morning, it's just like so fun just to see her and Aww, yeah. That's so sweet. It's, it's great. <laughs> well, congratulations on the baby. It's amazing. Thanks. Also, yeah, it's it's awesome. Fatherhood is great. It's good. <laughs> You won't sleep as much. That's one reason I'm yeah. all congested because <laughs> oh, no. it's, <laughs> it's literally been just like a couple weeks and we are just getting used to like how everything works, mm -hmm. and, you know, trying to figure out what we're doing as parents. <laughs> yeah. You'll get the hang of it. <laughs> Google will so. help you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Google is so helpful. It's crazy. YouTube, man. When you have a kid, oh wow, it's so important. I can't believe how much stuff we've found just reading up on there. It's been awesome. <laughs> yeah, that is, that sounds amazing. Um, <laughs> so you're you're a huge fan of um, Jurassic Park. Uh, yeah. Are you excited about the new movie coming out or what? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Um, so I have to I have to caveat that 
I have no idea if the new movie will turn out good. Uh huh. But I've got my fingers crossed. Oh. I really, <laughs> really hope so. How about are you a fan, Allison? Yeah, I am. I I used to uh I used to be obsessed with dinosaurs as well when I was a kid. Um, awesome. And I'm also an artist, but I don't really I don't really draw as many dinosaurs as I probably should. But uh, I was just <laughs> kind of fascinated by how weird they were, I think. <laughs> I also like bugs. Um, oh, but no, cool. I really did like Jurassic Park, and it was definitely inspiring as a kid. So, And this new movie, I'm just like, I'm kind of on the fence because, you know, remakes and stuff. But I don't know. It looks kind of interesting. I kind of I am digging how they might end up doing it all. So yeah. we'll see. It, it seems very experimental. But, um, yeah, yeah. I, like, I like the main actor a lot. So hopefully he'll oh, make it happen. Awesome. Yeah, he's he's amazing. He's the best like he's the best funny Indiana Jones type character. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He is awesome. I, I love the line in the trailer where he's like, That probably wasn't a good idea or whatever he says. It's yeah. like it's kind of what we're all thinking, like, Yeah, come on guys. Like, this probably wasn't a good idea, but we're excited for it. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be cool. Um so yeah, we have a question from Ryan. Um He's asking, um, crossing over between design and color, what do you find are the, are the design tools and elements that remain the most important across both? Oh, that's such a great question, Ryan. Um, so I, you know what, that's so important. I'm going to actually make a box right here and write out a couple of things for you. Sweet. Um, so for design, um, I'll make that a little bit bigger so you can see it. Uh, so I would say for something like design, the most important thing to make sure that you remember as you're designing is one, uh, making sure that you have good uh, rhythm. And I hope I spelled that right. <laughs> you're going to find that in your shapes. So for animation, we're talking like big medium, uh, small shapes. So like you look at this uh, dinosaur that I'm drawing over here, it's not necessarily uh, something for animation, so I'm sticking to shapes that are a little bit more realistic, just in, as I'm like sketching that out. I, I, you know, I'm just kind of doodling at the moment, but if I had something like an assignment at work, and I would probably take it in a different direction, and the first thing I would do is just work on the shapes. And uh, I can show you that in a second. The second thing with design, and this is mostly for animation as well, but it also applies to any type of design because it's a variation, is just getting your straights and your curves to work. Um, that's extremely important. And that's just juxtaposing straight lines with curvy lines to get kind of a within the actual contour of the character or the environment, um, you're just looking to create that nice variation. And the last thing, at least in design, is I'd say a repetition of shape. I think those three things for design are really, really important. And they apply mainly to, uh, I'd say like animation, probably the the biggest, most important thing. For color, <clears throat> color I think it changes just a little bit. The most important thing in color is your value. And if you take the Art of Color and Light with me, or any other instructor, in the lectures that I've recorded, I talk a lot about value. And value is truly the most important thing um, when you're painting something really large. And when you're painting anything, when I'm just doing this sketch right here, and I'll show you what I mean by that uh, in just a second. The other thing, after your values are correct, is getting your temperature correct with the colors. But like I said, it's all about the value when you're starting out. And if you can get those values working, everything else will fall into, into place. And I'd say the last thing is... Mm, Kind of depending on the way you want to think about this, just understanding the principles of light. And 
Uh, what I mean by that is like I'm going to turn my little dinosaur off for a second. Let's well, I can use this as a good opportunity to explain this. Um, we do a lot of great practicing um, in the CGMA class. Oops. Going over different lighting scenarios and everything, but <clears throat> if uh, you think about a principle of lighting like a sphere here, um, it's a really a really great question, by the way. Um, I'm going to make the background. Change my brush really quick. Allison, what's the weather like out there for you guys? Is it pretty nice right now? Yeah, uh, it's it's a little gloomy out. I kind of like it. <laughs> it's normally super sunny, oh, really? hot. Yeah, I I like. Um, I'm from Florida, so oh. I, it's, it's weird over here because everything's super dry and there's like no thunderstorms anymore. <laughs> Florida, the thunderstorms in Florida are so nice. Oh my god, they're insane. They're so nice. <laughs> yeah, I kind of miss the East Coast um, weather. A lot. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. We've had like a brutal winter this year. Oh, I know. Oh my God. How is that? Like, I is is that normal? It doesn't seem normal. Like the weather patterns have been really weird. Yeah, it's been pretty nuts. Uh, we had like record snowfall, and it's just been like crazy. So I, I I'm excited for winter to end and to kind of. Just get going <laughs> with something new. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it it's been good though. It's it's still been it's been an okay winter. I'd say it's probably been the worst one that I've experienced here. Ooh, yowza. How long have you been uh in you're are you actually in um We yeah. actually we moved to Connecticut just north of the city. Mm -hmm. So we're up in Danbury now. Um it's about about an hour north, well, it's not really that far away, but because of traffic out here, it just mm -hmm. takes a bit longer. But we're just up north of the city now, and uh, we did that just to save some money. Oh, yeah, I bet. <laughs> we're, we're considering doing that here. <laughs> you, I'm, yeah. I'm in L.A., <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's a little yeah. hard. Yeah, it, it's expensive, right? Yeah, it's Even, super expensive. It's hard. It's hard out here. <laughs> yeah, totally. But uh, we live in very expensive places, and <laughs> yep. it's kind of like buying a place in these areas is uh, it may not even be the best idea at the time with the economy and everything. But mm -hmm. it's like we've looked into that, and we keep changing our mind. <laughs> We're like, should we buy something? No, let's wait. Okay, let's wait. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's hard to make the decision. It's cool what you're doing with your um it looks like you're messing with your bounce light. That's awesome. Yeah, um I I was just uh playing with that before I flipped it around. So what I've done right here, guys, is just created a basic lighting scenario. If you take the class, uh, we go into more depth and I can explain it a little bit more like what's going on. Um but in a nutshell what we talk about a lot in there is stuff like this. Uh, so answering this question about the difference between color and design and, and what's important in both of those. The big thing is just understanding the principles of lighting and this is kind of an example of that. Everything that you've seen me do with this has just been understanding the principles of light and how it works. And you know, it's all kind of a part of that grand scheme of things and it's fun uh, because once you get this down um, you can do you know anything that you want as you're painting uh, but if you don't have this um, it makes it a lot harder to 
really uh, be able to to nail paintings and to nail your design. So, in a nutshell, um, this is kind of like going into like the principles of light. Um, I'll just point out a couple things really quick. I've got a key light source that's coming down and we're kind of seeing it hit right here on this sphere. And that's like my main light source. Then over here, that the reason I added that is because there's like this blue ambience and that's creating a fill light right there. And the key light is also bouncing off the ground here and creating a little bit of uh, a bounce. And and then you've got this shadow. It's got some occlusion right there where the two touch and then a highlight. And all that is just kind of stuff that um, we talk about in color and that's kind of the big difference. Now, you saw earlier I'm working on this dinosaur. So I can bring this dinosaur in and I was kind of doing it with like a backlit scenario. Um, I could get rid of my sphere but a lot of times what I do is I just shrink things down like this and bring my dinosaur back in. And of course, the dinosaur looks really uh, desaturated in this lighting scenario because I was painting it to a white background. So it tells you a little bit about the uh, color differences of the temperatures. And that's kind of the next thing is figuring out your temperatures. So let me see if I can get this guy to fit into this environment a little bit better and talk about that a teeny bit. Um, when we were talking earlier about values, one of the first things you want to do is make sure that your value, when you look at something in black and white, is uh, different enough that it pops off, right? So everything there, the value here, the cast shadow is darker than the core shadow, and that's really important. If you don't have that, then you're going to end up getting something that looks kind of funky or weird. So I've got this uh, sphere that I made this for, so I can apply what I did to that sphere right here on the dinosaur. And I'll just see if I can light this guy in the same um, scheme of lighting. That's really cool. Would you suggest um, kind of making a sphere um, in this kind of, you know, I I don't know if this is if this is something that you probably already have the hang of <laughs> since you've been yeah. doing it so long, but for people yeah. that are just kind of starting with, you know, getting the hang of how bounce light works and shadows and values, would you suggest making a sphere first um, in a similar you know, environment that you have set up here before going oh. and painting a whole object? Yeah, I think that's a really good idea, uh, totally. One thing that you get from making a sphere like this is like, you guys can see I don't necessarily have a finished design, but before you start painting something, it's always good to have a really solid design, you know, that you know what's happening in the geometry exactly. Mm -hmm. And if you've got that, then it makes this part um, pretty easy, actually, because all you have to do is just follow the principles of light and, and kind of put things together. So, yeah, to answer your question, what you just said, Allison, yeah, totally. It's, I think it's pretty crucial to understand that. And so anytime that I get stuck or, you know, if I have a problem with anything, I might uh, just quickly draw a sphere or something and figure out um, what exactly I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, and just kind of adapt what is happening to the sphere um, to all the other objects to keep the consistent yeah. lighting and everything. Yeah, exactly. And cool. If you can do a sphere, you can really do like anything. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm kind of just noodling in here and figuring this out, but like once you understand how to do a sphere, I mean, you could probably hit just about anything that you want. That's cool. What kind of brush are you using? What kind of what kind of Photoshop brushes do you like yeah. to use? So these are my brushes. They're not necessarily mine. Some of them I found on the internet. Some of them I've made or modified from other people's brushes. And a lot of them are just default brushes that, like these are all just default brushes from Natural Brushes in Photoshop. Um, you can find them, I think, in Natural Brushes 2 right there. 
And Sweet. this is like the 14 or the 12 pixel brush. I forget what it is. But it's kind of like a blue sky favorite <laughs> for oh, cool. when somebody's doing like color keys and stuff. So it's a great brush. Uh, it's useful. It's it's helpful. And it, what's nice about it, this is what I have my canvas set to right now. And I have it at 150 resolution, pretty small. But the nice thing about this brush is I can move like really, really quickly as I paint, and it it catches everything pretty quick. I don't, there's no lag time, I guess. Yeah, I have that issue with some of my brushes that I use. I don't know why, and my computer is super strong, but sometimes like my um my brushes lag, and it's so weird. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that that can be really obnoxious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One. <laughs> Yeah, it I, man, when that happens, it can be the worst. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what I try and avoid. And it brings up a really good point. Is like if I have a brush that's like lagging, sometimes I'll just like modify that brush uh, to the point where I don't have to use it necessarily anymore. Mm -hmm. Or you know, try and figure out a way to get around it. Are you but, using you know, a um? Are you what? What kind of tablet are you using? Um, I use just a Wacom. I'm like flipping it over, looking at it. <laughs> uh, I've got very specified technology here. Um, at home, I've just got a looks like a medium or a small size Wacom tablet. Mm -hmm. I think it's an Intuos Four. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, and it's got pretty good pressure sensitivity and everything. And then mm -hmm. at Blue Sky, I've got uh, a Cintiq and. What else do we have over there? Um, I've got a tablet as well. I kind of use the Cintiq for design, and then I use the tablet when I'm going into any color stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's cool. It's kind, of, kind of my workflow. That's interesting because some I I talk to a lot of artists about that, um, and they have a hard time switching between um, Cintiq and and uh, tablet like. A lot of them can only use one or the other. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and that, I can I can totally see why because it is it is kind of a pain sometimes to switch back and forth. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I I just I'll just do everything in one of them instead. Yeah. Um, um, I'm just adding some little cool details. I'm kind of I'm gonna turn this to be a little bit more animated looking. Um, I think it was Ryan that asked the question about the difference between those two. So mm -hmm. just putting some more shapes into things now um, cool. to push for that. So how do you, how, do you ever have an issue with getting like muddy, like muddy down looks to your paintings? And how do you deal with that if, you know, that ends up happening? Yeah, yeah that's a really good question. Um, mud comes, mud's not necessarily a bad thing, but uh, you see how juicy the sphere is over here? Like, one thing I've got to make sure that happens as I'm painting this right now is i got to make sure that I don't get muddy, and uh, the way I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen is by just keeping my values really solid so everything kind of makes sense um, what I'm doing here. Um, mud comes from just when colors get um, mixed together and the values are incorrect and the saturation is incorrect. And it's actually really easy to do. <laughs> so that's a big thing that I'm always making sure and uh, having to kind of watch and finesse as we're going. So like even while we're painting right now, I'm keeping a close eye that my values, even the lightest lights, never go as light as that background right there. Mm -hmm. Because if they do, um, I'm going to be in trouble. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to mess everything up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's going to change the way that this works. And I'm still kind of in my like design mode right now. I'm just like playing around with the shapes and what's happening here with, within um, the dinosaur's eye here. That's a really good question. <laughs> I feel like there's just so many awesome things you can talk about. Yeah, um, there really are. There's a lot of good stuff. 
Um, let's see. I think we have another question about um, someone wants to know more of the details about uh, temperature and the relationship of color. Um, yeah, that's great. Um, well, it's a it's a great question because right now I'm just starting to think about the temperature a little bit more. So um, I'm I'm kind of going through a checklist in my head right here. I've got like this dinosaur that I'm looking at, and I'm just kind of hashing out his geometry a little bit more and making sure that my principles of light are working. And then once that's feeling good, um, I can go in and start uh, changing the temperatures around a little bit. So right now, what I'm really paying closest attention to is making sure that there's one local color. And by local color, I mean, these are all really deep principles we could talk about forever because they're so important to what we're doing. But local color is basically making sure that you have one color that uh, this dinosaur is predominantly one color. And so I've chosen like this red color. This is what it looks like in the light. That's what it looks like in the shadow. And I just want to make sure that um, that's working and then any places where I have like cast shadows uh, like right here might be a little bit of a cast shadow. Let me merge my layers down. Um, I might have a little bit of a cast shadow along there. With the cast shadows, it's going to get a little bit darker. And you know why I'm talking about that um, is because temperature-wise, um, I got to make sure those values are working really well before I can do uh, anything else with the temperature. So right now I've got kind of a warm hit coming up here and hitting the dinosaur. And I need, what I'd like to do once I get that feeling a little bit tighter there, is I'm going to change some colors. Like I'm going to make it so this dinosaur's got like spots or something on, the, on his back. And I don't know necessarily what those are going to be. Maybe there's like some things like this on their back. And right now I'm just, I'm literally just dropping in the colors and testing them. Maybe there's like some little things like this. Um, I'm going to duplicate that so it's just a little bit stronger. And I'm going to save that for a second and I'm going to come back because as I did that, I noticed a couple areas where I can enhance the values a little bit more just make sure that they're working better. I'm going to darken this eye a little bit. So temperature wise, um, I'm just thinking about any areas as I'm painting this that uh, aren't necessarily working super, super well in terms of warm and cool. Wow, ah, it's a raptor. <laughs> <laughs> And so when I like drop that in, I'm just thinking, I'm still really not too concerned about everything else. I'm, I'm really just thinking about uh, the values still. And I guess since I'm doing design and value at the same time for you guys, I'm also <clears throat> thinking a little bit about um, my design here, making sure that it's not getting too uh, weird. So. One thing I'm noticing here as I'm drawing this, I haven't put any light that's going to make this more volumetric in yet, but I think I want to have a little stronger light right there. And maybe up here, maybe I shouldn't say stronger light, but I just want to accentuate a couple things. And I'm, I'm really looking for where I can push the temperature and where I can't. And understanding that is half of the battle to doing a painting. Understanding what you can push and what you can't. So like for instance, I could push this a little bit lighter here, but I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know if that's the right thing to do because that's breaking my sphere, right? So maybe the only thing <clears throat> the only thing that I could do at this point is I can tone down the value of 
everything else just a little bit. And I can let those other ones stay a little bit lighter like that. <clears throat> and hopefully that makes sense what I just did. Um, I'm making sure that I can do, I can shift the way I'm shifting. And what I'm going to do is create a little bit of a pop here on the back. Um, you know, maybe it's like, there's my highlight color. Maybe this dinosaur has something that kind of goes up him like that. It kind of catches the light a little bit. And then maybe it kind of catches there. And maybe a little bit up on top right there. And that's, I'm making that just going a little bit warmer and warmer. And maybe I can even push this a bit more. So thinking about temperature, I guess one big thing that I'm thinking about <clears throat> all times that I'm doing it <clears throat> is, yeah, you can think about warm and cool, but before you get really caught up in warm and cool, <clears throat> it's thinking a lot about uh, exactly what's happening on, on your character or whatever it is that you're painting. Um, what light is most important to affect the character to still tell the story. And I, so I want to put some of this bounce light coming in. Now, this is kind of a different lighting scenario because, of course, we've got this dinosaur here that's, we've got him right above the ground here, but that's not necessarily where he'd be. But I'm just going to warm up in these shadows a little bit, some of this, and I, I guess just for our demonstration right now, that's how I'm going to approach it. But you maybe wouldn't want to approach it like that necessarily. Maybe maybe approach it a different way. Maybe in the eye to um, you might get a little bit of bounce like that coming off. <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe that should be a little bit more red like that. And since we've got like this blue fill, we might be able to cheat a little bit of a highlight or something in there. It's kind of like, maybe it's over on this side, away from there. And then um, I'm constantly like looking at this small. And then when I want to start coming in with like other colors here, um, if, if I was happy with that, uh, I could just start figuring out what kind of a color I want that to be. What goes on this guy's back the best? And so cute. <laughs> he looks so <laughs> surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. I, um, maybe I just like change the values just a little bit like that. See how that's kind of making it fit in a little bit better. I'm just thinking about, you know, where are the lightest lights and thinking, is that blue material on the dinosaur's back? Will that catch, catch the light stronger than some of the other materials? And that's, that's kind of up to you as the artist. I didn't do a sphere for the blue, so it could technically, it could be um, a, different, a different color um, and a different material. So it might be more like shiny or something. So maybe it it like shows up a little bit more like that, like there's a sheen or something. And then maybe I tone it down a little bit. Maybe there's just a part of it. And, you know, maybe this whole thing is a little bit more popped. Maybe a little bit more juicy like that. And it looks like that highlight that I added in there isn't quite working, so I'm going to just tone that down. And what I'm noticing is it's getting a little bit too crazy, so I'm going to take away some of my color a little bit like that, and I'm going to darken this value even more. Oh, uh, Tyler, someone's uh, asking if... Are you gonna? Are you planning on making a Gumroad video tutorial at any point? 
Yeah, great question. Um, I, I am, and I'm actually working on one, um, a really, it's like a big moment painting. Ooh. Um, I'm just kind of still looking for uh, the time to finish it, but I have the design all done, and it's going to be really fun. Um, awesome. So I have that on the way, in the making. Woohoo! Once the baby kind of gives me a little breather, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, I'll definitely be doing that. Yeah, and like if you guys ever um, have any suggestions on like things that you want to see, like if you're like, oh man, I would love to see a Gumroad video or whatever on this, shoot me a message or leave me a comment on a social media outlet, and I'd be happy to because I am always. Uh, I just remember, like I mentioned it earlier, I remember when I was in school and when I was working to get out in the industry, and I just like was so grateful to everyone that was so helpful to me and just always looking to give me anything that they could that would help me out. And so anytime there's anything that I can do, I'd be happy to. But yeah, I was thinking of making a couple Gumroad things. I was just going to make some free ones so people could just see my process and then eventually make some other ones that people can buy if they're really interested in uh, really pushing things further if they want. Well, that would be really yeah. cool. Yeah, it, I'm looking forward to it when, once I can get around <laughs> to doing <Yeah>. it. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully soon. Um, one thing just to explain that I'm doing right now is I'm just, once again, I'm checking my values again, um, checking to make sure that everything's fitting right, and just playing a little bit with uh, temperatures right here in the eye. There's like a socket that an eye sits in, and so I want to make sure that the dinosaur's eye kind of fits back in there. Maybe there's a little bounce light that bounces up here like that. Um, I'm just making sure that I'm hitting that. And I I'm also, at the same time, changing the design just a little bit here and there. Um, and you can see, like, it's we're starting to get a pretty solid um, look right there. And that's mostly because the values are really strong, and we're just making sure that all that is working good. Um, I'm still not convinced of that color as it gets lighter, so I'm going to try something else here. You should um, you should give them human teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. I'm just kidding. Don't do. It. It'll look weird. Actually. <laughs> Oops, I'm just going to kind of merge all those. And I actually really like um, painting everything on like one layer. Uh, it's not a terrible habit to, to make because it makes you a little bit faster, actually, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So I, I know those aren't the most perfect. <laughs> Maybe it needs to go to the dentist. <laughs> But <laughs> I can basically if I, <laughs> if I get the, you're fine. If I get the values right, I can I can basically just drop them in like that, and everything will be like totally okay. So I'm just darkening that a little bit inside. Maybe there's a part of his teeth that kind of hit outside outside light a little bit right there and catch a little glimmer. Maybe there's one that just catches the ding right there. Maybe that's too strong. <clears throat> but in general, it's kind of like making sure that those are working out. Going back to this, to this skin here. I need to lighten up this a bit. So remember, I'm lighting the dinosaur like that, so the light should be hitting a little bit more frontal than I have it. 
And so I gotta match that up a little bit better. <laughs> Sorry. That's is that a hiccup? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh awesome. Sorry about that. No, it's out of not. nowhere. And it's just one. <laughs> Hiccups are like a baby's worst enemy. Oh no. That's what to learn. Why? Yeah, they, like, they just like make the baby really fussy. Oh. So as soon as Tula has like a hiccup, it's just like I'm immediately like burping her, making sure that <laughs> she's getting anything she needs because oh. if she doesn't get that like right away, whoo, she is gonna be in a bad mood. <laughs> oh wow. It is very uncomfortable. Um, especially yeah. the consecutive ones, they're very painful. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's so interesting how, like, the human body works. Like, birth is crazy. Mm -hmm. It's such an amazing thing. And, like, hiccups, it's just, like, a natural phenomenon <laughs> of how we get things out of our system. It's just, like, so cool. I think it's so amazing just how everything works. So I was just playing a little bit with that. Um, maybe the jaw here comes out like this a little bit more. And we see that a little stronger. I really like that brush. It's actually really cool. Oh, thanks. And it's yeah. just a Photoshop brush? Yeah, it's just a generic Photoshop brush. Um, awesome. I have the settings to shape dynamics of pen pressure right here mm -hmm. and then transfer I just have the transfer clicked on like that just to get those sock edges on the end and then smoothings on and then oh, awesome. nothing else has changed the spacing is just one percent and uh, it it works like a charm like it does exactly what I need it to do and it's really quick too so I highly recommend it to anybody that wants to just kind of like Try it out, see what they think. Uh, it's it's a great brush. Sweet, I'm definitely gonna give it a shot. <laughs> and it's free. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. <laughs> it's free. It's always great, right? <laughs> yeah. You don't have to worry about like stealing it from a specific artist who worked yeah. really hard to make it. <laughs> <laughs> and it, you know, as you look around, it's like it seems like everybody is just sharing all their stuff today. Like artists are so generous and mm -hmm. willing to just give what they're what they're working on so yeah and really artists good. have artists are very most artists that I know are super super giving um, yeah they just most of them are just like really liking to help people and um, you know involving others in in their stuff and I think it's really cool yeah that, it's so true there's so many like good people out there so we're surrounded by good people good yeah. things um, that being said, though, um, we have a couple people asking, uh, what, in your opinion, what are the three, or what are, not, not so much three, but what are the most important qualities and attributes of an artist that, that you can think of? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, well, in my opinion, um, I think the most important thing in being an artist is just making sure that you understand the basic principles of whatever it is that you do. So if you're going to focus on like color and design, if like that's your thing and that's what you want to do, um, just making sure that like you understand what makes a good design, like what makes something better than something else, um, what makes uh, color like juicy. I always talk about that in my class. What makes it juicy? What makes it work well like what makes this this dinosaur work good and uh, what are the things that you can do as an artist to make sure that you know like what you're doing works how do you how do you make sure that a texture or a color feels a certain way and it's all it's all based on just understanding these principles and understanding how they work and what's going on uh, with those different things. Because, you know, if, as an artist, perhaps the three most important things that you have to understand is what makes good art, how to create that good art, and then how to find your personal um, voice within everything. 
because it's mm -hmm. it's easy to get caught up in crap. It's like super easy to just like be chasing things all the time. Mm -hmm. But as an artist, you just want to make sure that you're you're kind of staying true to yourself at the same time. Yeah, and I think that's really the key, and people yeah. lose track of that, and then they get eaten up by the rest of it because they just they lost yeah. what they had going. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah, yeah. you caught well, up and. And like what you said, Allison, like it, it truly does like eat you up. You have to understand how to plan your time out and kind of figure out how you want to spend uh, your days, like figure out your priorities. And that being said, like I personally think that um, you become a better artist the more that you understand about yourself mm -hmm. and about who you are and, you know, why you're even doing it. Like, I remember when I was kind of starting out and just, you know, offering up a lot of prayers about, <laughs> you know, please help me so that I can understand how to do this and, you know, what, how can I become better, what do I need to do, and whether you believe in God or you don't believe in God or you believe in a different God or nothing at all, understanding what it is that you do believe in and allowing that to help you and to grow from that. Mm -hmm. um, that, I feel like, is so crucial uh, just in becoming an artist, just making sure that you understand like what you really stand for, because I think, Allison, you're hitting it on the head. Like You can get into the industry, and you're going to get pulled in so many different directions, and it's like you have to know beforehand what you stand for. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I know it sounds so cheesy, but it's like, what do you stand for? Why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. And what kind of an artist are you going to be? Are you going to be that person who is looking to help everybody out? Or are you going to be the artist who's maybe different, that's more stingy about things? It's like, it doesn't really matter which one you want to be. Of course, we all want somebody who's nicer and kinder. <laughs> but mm -hmm. it's like, it's really, you know, what kind of a person do you want to be? It's a really good question. <laughs> I agree. I'm like adding in these weird little thingies in here. <laughs> it's funny. He's kind of a shiny dinosaur, isn't he? Shiny. <laughs> Got some of those crazy scales. He exfoliates. <laughs> he exfoliates. <laughs> That's good. How do you go about choosing a good color scheme for your stuff? Because I literally uh, like the colors you have. Like, it's very... Oh, uh, thanks. Um. <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. It, I, I feel like with practice, you kind of come up with new ideas and new ways to like approach it. Uh, but one thing that I like to think about, and I talk about this a little bit in my uh, lectures and everything in the CGMA class, is I when I'm looking at like a color wheel. Like, for instance, if I'm if we're looking at this, let me open this up a little bit. We don't really have a color wheel right here necessarily, but if we did, one thing that I'm thinking about, I guess, think about it like this. If we connected this red to this red over here, we would have a full circle, right? We'd have a, a color wheel. And when we have a color wheel, sometimes you'll be, like, for instance, I was painting this reddish color here. And I jumped all the way over to like this greenish color. And so if I like color drop it, I'm kind of like here, and then I'm there. And look at all the colors I'm jumping over right there. There's a lot. And I would call that, because these are almost complementary colors, they basically are, it's like red and green. I'm almost jumping the color wheel. The only reason I can get away with this right now, and you could make any color work, but the reason why these are kind of harmonious is because I've established that this is a different color than this on the dinosaur. So like the actual skin of the dinosaur is different. So you look at this, how this is like wrapping right here, and that's basically all the same color. This is what it looks like in a cast shadow. This is kind of a core shadow right here, and then this is just the skin coming into the light. So you're saying like, wow, that's 
that's so simple. How does that help you choose a color? But basically, if if I wanted to get really fancy with the spices here, <laughs> which we can try, but I don't necessarily think you need to because you can keep your color so pure. But let's say that we wanted to gradate from this red to a more orangey color as it goes up into there. Um, I wouldn't do something like this. I wouldn't like choose this color and uh, if I wanted to eventually get to this color on the skin by the time the dinosaur gets like there, I wouldn't really blend like those two colors together because I'm jumping over a bunch of colors in between. I would find a color in between them and put that as like, and it's so subtle that you Ooh, can't even tell cool. that it's happening. But it's like if I wanted to do that, those are the things I need to be thinking about as I'm going. Which, you know, for depending on what you want to do, that's kind of one way you can approach it. But once I've done that, now I've changed my whole color scheme. And so I have to change everything accordingly. And so instead of like this red shadow there, that should now be more of this color. And, you know, if this is going to be green up here, all this stuff is going to have to start changing around. And you can see that it, it's kind of harmonious. It's getting there. I need, to, I need to spend more time to make it work. But you can see that if you want to do anything, you can totally pull it off. But it all really depends on um, if you're jumping that wheel, you make sure that you have colors that meet you in between to make everything work, to make everything function. Because now the skin on the dinosaur, it's more of like this... It's like a mud, which is fine. We don't. It doesn't matter what the color is. People a lot of times get caught up in like, oh, it's it's, you know, ultramarine blue with a hint of hazel, and <laughs> a sporadic pine needle green <laughs> dappled inside. And it's like that stuff doesn't even matter. Like, it doesn't really matter what the color is. All that it matters is how it makes you feel when you look at it, like what you're seeing there. And so when you're looking at that, it's it's working, and it's a little bit more muddy now, but that's because I just did a color shift. And the reason why that color shift works is because uh, I followed this spectrum. I went from red to orange to yellow to green right there. And then I did a value change up here to make it um, pop because I really wanted this to still stand out a little bit. That's a really good question. Cool. Awesome. And, yeah, I would say, like, if you guys are ever, like, wondering, you know, where, how do you come up with ideas like this? And I'm not saying, like, I, you know, I have all the answers for that. But if you're ever wondering, like, you're having trouble with your colors, it's really great to go back and look at masters, like, look at uh, a sergeant or a Tom Lavelle, uh, these illustrators who are just, like, kick butt. Um, James Gurney has an amazing book called Light and Color. It's a great book. Oh, and yeah. He does, yeah, he does some awesome stuff like this with his dinosaurs. I've learned a lot from that and just from talking to other artists, taking classes with people that, you know, I want to paint like and be like. and um, It's a journey, you know. And mm -hmm. the cool thing about being an artist, as you know, Allison, is we're always looking to learn new things and to become better and better. Yeah. And yeah, you just you find that by talking and um, learning from one another and mm -hmm. sharing your ideas, just being nice people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think it's really important for people to want to learn and want to, you know, take classes and expand um, what they think they know because it's like it's incredible what how much you don't know <laughs> until you're learning something new and you're like, whoa. Oh, it's so true. Yeah, you know, I I learned Spanish. I learned Spanish on a mission for two years. And when I was learning Spanish, I was learning more about the English language than I ever knew. Wow. And it was mostly because I realized that I didn't really understand the English language that well, even though I thought that I did. I was just always learning new stuff. 
and basically learning that I wasn't as smart as I thought I was. <laughs> oh yeah, that's like a daily realization for me. <laughs> it's like oh. for everybody, right? <laughs> I hope so. I mean, I think uh, I think it's important to say as humble as possible if if you're a human. But uh, there's some people that could say that you know they know everything, which that's fine. <laughs> you just go about your your way, knowing everything. But uh, no, it's it's definitely. <laughs> I I think uh, the world would be a different place if people just came to terms with the fact that they don't know everything, and that learning um, is you'll do it until you die if you want to survive. So <laughs> totally, totally cool. I I think you have a good point. It's very. Very true. It I would like be how this dinosaur looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> what should we name it? Should we should we start a rumor and say that this is the secret dinosaur on Jurassic World? Yeah, this yeah, is and his name is Steve. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I've got like a grandpa <laughs> cough right now because of my cough. But yes, Steve. Steve. Hey, that makes world. me happy beyond words. Or er, yeah. All right. <laughs> Okay, guys, so as soon as this ends, <laughs> uh, we're going to just do a viral thing, and we're going to leak this onto the Internet, and we're going to start like a crazy... That's going to be awesome. <laughs> yes. I better get some more official writing so it looks like real Jurassic World. <laughs> that <concept> art, right? <laughs> That's awesome. Cool. Well, we're going to wrap this up because I think we're, we went over our hour. So, um, but yeah, it was amazing talking with you, Tyler. You have a lot of great insight and uh, great things to share. Uh, for those of you out there who are still with us, um, thank you so much for joining us for this amazing session. Um, if you want to enroll in Tyler's class, we'll be taking in new students next term um, during our spring term. That's going to happen April first. I'm sorry, April third. <laughs> so be sure to sign up. Um, and yeah, it's great. Learn, learn, keep learning, stay inspired. <laughs> thanks so much, Allison, and thanks for coming, everybody. It's been awesome to be with you and awesome questions. Yes, thank you for questions. <laughs> awesome. Bye, everybody. Have a great day.